Well, I'm very blessed again. I haven't lost any friends. A lot of people dementia say, oh, I've lost all my friends. But that's because the friends don't know how to deal with it. It's all to do with lack of understanding, <laughs> ignorance, really. So when I told everybody when I first had my diagnosis that I had dementia, if any of them deign to walk away or ignore me, I would ask them why. I'd run after them, say, I haven't got measles, you can't catch it, you know. <laughs> and I'd written some leaflets in preparation for them to tell them how to treat myself. And I would hand out these leaflets. Again, they're all on my website <laughs> if anybody wants. They, again, can be downloaded and changed if anybody wants to follow that particular pattern. And then people would come back because I'm sure you know when, pe when someone dies, people don't know how to treat the person left behind quite often to start with. You know, they kind of avoid them because they don't know what to say. But you just treat them normally, for goodness sake, don't you? Isn't that the best way of doing it? You don't have to put on a different kind of hat and, and be all kind of carefully and fluffy and have your gloves on all the time. You just treat them the same, please. <laughs> so I've gained a lot of friends, in fact. So I've been, you know, I, it's, it's wonderful. Invest in time and energy and, and love into them. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's, that's the best answer I can give there, really. Um, and, and respect. And, and to me, respect isn't a given. You know, you have to earn respect. I have to earn respect and people have to earn my respect. Um, and and in, in, in my case, once they've earned it, they very, very seldom lose it because I'm an incredibly loyal person and I stick with things and I stick with people and I stick with what I believe in. Um, and it takes a lot to knock me off that. Um, so, yeah, it, it's through connection, through uh, respect, through love and investing time and effort into those relationships and then celebrating those relationships um, for, for what they bring to me and hopefully what they bring to whoever else is in that relationship. My, my three daughters have always known me as an independent working woman and they've respected that. Um, they, even if I don't, I don't see them every day, I see them often, but technology again, it's, have I liked something on Facebook? Oh, mum's all right. I, I, I saw her like something. Or oh, mum's put a picture of a, a plant or something on Facebook or, or uh, my middle daughter would say, oh, I think uh, mum's okay because I've seen washing on her line. Um, it's those sort of clues to them that mum's okay, she's doing well. And uh, they know that if I did have a problem or a difficulty that I'm finding difficult to manage, they would be here in a shot. And I've also got a superb son-in-law. Um, he is brilliant he is brilliant he, um... it is hard for a carer wife spouse to understand why your loved one can't do things anymore and you've got to really it's us that have got to change the carers that have got to change with them so you do feel a little bit of frustration you feel a bit angry um you feel guilty because you're getting angry um and you're on a bereavement um road every single day um because you're losing that person you love and you do lose that um emotion that you had as husband and wife or whatever relationship you had before dementia so uh, i'm not going to paint a, a nice picture that we're you know yes i do love him don't get me wrong but it's not in the same way as it was pri prior to his diagnosis I try, I try very hard to keep my relation, relationships within the family and outside the family as good as they can be. I try very hard to, to not say some of the, some of the truths that, that come up. And a good example is, you know, we all tell white lies in our lives and because we just do. Um, it's like the question, you know, does my bum look big in this dress? You don't, 
if we don't give the honest answer, you know, or well, if if we were always honest all the time, we'd all walk around with you know bruised noses and black eyes, wouldn't we? So it's it's a matter of being able to be tactful. Now that is becoming more difficult with my dementia. The the that that system that layer in there that stops me actually saying what I'm thinking is gradually going but I, I work hard at it and I I try very hard to if somebody says something to me I listen in my head to what they said to me I think about what my answer should be and then I give my answer that's in a perfect world in the real world um people don't like pauses do they so it does hold up a conversation if you're doing that too much so but most of the time I'm all right and when when perhaps the answer isn't quite as good as it, sh it should be or quite as subtle as it should be because people know that it's not me it's my dementia that's causing it because, because I've let them know then I'm able to continue with with my relationships I am very fortunate my grandma and I have been soul sisters, I feel like my whole life, we've had this unspoken connection. And I just feel like being her caregiver and able to nurture this relationship, it's only grown. As her full-time caregiver, daily, I give her the love that she gave me as a child, the constant, unconditional love. I'm her biggest hype girl. I'm always telling her, you're beautiful. You got this, Mary. You're doing it. And I think that that is the way that she always treated me as a child. And so now it's kind of reciprocating that love and care um, that we give to one another. Even though my grandma has Alzheimer's and I am her caregiver, she still is my grandma and she still provides love to me. And I hold on to that for as long as I can.